Woo! <laughs> what is going on, everyone? Well, I wanted to do a quick brap rant uh, because I um, wanted to talk about video games. wanted to talk about um, the Xbox Series X and, um, and games, the importance of exclusives and software and all that other good stuff. First, I want to th- uh, give a big shout out to everyone in the live chat. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out. Uh, I'm going to ask if you guys wouldn't mind retweeting the link out. I'm going to drop that here. Uh, in just a second in the live chat so definitely appreciate that hit that like button if you haven't done so already definitely appreciate the support all right so we have finally got the confirmation of the worst kept secret in the gaming industry what's up envy dub worst kept secret in the gaming industry xbox series x is 12 teraflops if you didn't uh listen to um this week's uh, Brat Podcast, and unfortunately, we I, I didn't have time to um, edit and um, you know combine the two videos, but uh, YouTube Studio actually crashed on us um, while we were recording um, while we while we were recording um, uh, Wednesday's Brat Podcast. So we we did a part one, part two, and I just didn't have the time to you know uh, merge the two uh, streams together, videos together. And so that's why you have a part one, part two, but definitely check out part one because um, there's some def- there's some insight from uh, Optimus Code. Um, now, if you don't know who Optimus Code is, he's actually somebody uh, who's a I believe he's a software engineer. Um, I know he's actually been in the gaming industry, uh, has made games in the past. He has a lot of um, in depth experience in the gaming industry. Um, you know, we, I, the reason I have him on is because look, he, one, he's a awesome guy to talk video games with, but two, um, Optimus has been in the industry and knows what he's talking about and can give us the kind of insight that, um, I frankly can't provide because I've never made a video game. I have some general understanding of development and just talking to game developers that I've had on this show and that I've talked to in DM, um, Hint, hint, we're going to have somebody who coming on the next couple, probably the next 90 days or so. I know it sounds for a ways out, um, but we're going to ha- potentially have uh, somebody who is involved in a game called Dragon Age. Um, but Optimus is a great, just a great source of knowledge. Gave he, And he provided a lot of insight into, um, you know, some of the things that I've been seeing out there with regards to the Xbox Series X uh, on paper being as powerful as the uh the nvidia 2080 super gpu mm. not the 2080 ti mm. um and he talks about that talks about how a gpu works things like that etc cetera, etc cetera. so definitely definitely check that out if you want some insight mm. uh into how all these things work but <clears throat> um and i apologize i'm a little bit under the weather ice man says pc master race Buck Rogers says a brap rant and woo. That's right, buddy. All right. So look, I gotta say something. Microsoft has put a pretty, pretty impressive machine together in the Xbox Series X. I don't. There's no any rational person I don't think would dispute the fact that this this console is a beast. It is. It, I mean, it's it's gonna be the most powerful console this console generation. There's no. There's no debating that. I hate to break it, break it to the Sony, you know, the the Sony hardcore fan base out there who think that the PlayStation Five is going to be more powerful. It's not the case. Um, Microsoft has um, really put together a very impressive machine. I love. I love this version of Microsoft compared to the version or this version of the Xbox platform better than the version of the xbox platform that kind of fumbled the ball in 2013 um and i kind of want to make i I think that people have um i see people talking about power a lot uh and power is exciting look i mean i i'm not gonna lie to you anytime you hear power obviously if you're hardcore gamer your ears probably perk up you know i've been gaming for almost 40 years now um and anytime a, a new powerful console came out 
And we, I mean, we would always be like, oh my God, like, this is awesome. Like, let's see what's going on. Hey, Ryan Landis, what's going on, man? Let's see what's going on. Like, let's, this is, this is cool. Like, let's, let's see what this is about. And, um, look, I, I, it's crazy. I even have to like, it's crazy that I have to preface this this way, but one, this is not a knock against, uh, the Xbox platform. It, it is not a knock against the Xbox platform. I'm only trying to put things in perspective. It is a, this is more of a, um, this is just a conversation just to kind of put things in perspective. And, um, I've been um, hold on, sacred guys. I'm, look, so I'm trying to multitask, like work at the same time, and do this brab rant. <laughs> so it's like emails are coming in. Hold on, just sacred guys. Sorry about that, guys. Again. Trying to multitask here. Um, so, uh, you know, I just want to put things in perspective. Like, look, this console is an impressive piece of hardware. There's, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I tweeted something out the other day. Because um, I see people talking a lot about features, um, Game Pass, X Cloud, um, Xbox Live, the power, and those things are great. Like I mean, they, they I mean they are. I mean like those those options, um, new ways to 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 access our content or our library, if you will, digital library. All that stuff is awesome. Microsoft is the one thing Microsoft's always been great at, and I and I live this through the. Um, original Xbox, um, give you my history with the Xbox platform. Um, I was an Xbox Live beta tester back in 2002. And, you know, even then, I mean, Microsoft was, um, you know, kind of criticized for putting, you know, putting an Ethernet port uh, back in the back of a console at the time where most house, households did not have um, broad, broadband internet. Uh, and that feature would would go on to serve them well um, with the Xbox generate with the Xbox 360. But uh, there's a game that that made there's a game that allowed that feature that that Ethernet port to be relative. And that game was Halo. Halo was a game changer at the time. I know some of you guys are a little bit younger than me. So don't have the perspective of the impact that Halo had, not just not just on the Xbox platform, but on the industry as a whole. Guys, the Halo was a genre-defining game. I can't stress that enough. So when you hear guys like me, irrelevant says so so early for this. <laughs> Rise and shine, Mister Mister Native. <laughs> What's going on, Rate the Emperor? Envy Dub says, if Project Mara announcement is any indication, Microsoft sees to be getting right for next gen. Let's hope that's the case. That's a great point. I'll talk about that here in a sec. So uh, Halo just was just big impact in the industry. And really, I mean, guys, I mean, when's the last time we saw one game put a platform on the map? Maybe one could make a case for Breath of the Wild with the release of the Nintendo Switch. Magui says, Brap talking about these Xbox beta tester days reminds me of Grandpa's stories. <laughs> What's going on, Nate? By the way, I had a great conversation with Nate in DM yesterday about PC, hardware, console, the pros and cons of each. Very insightful. Nate, what's going on, dude? Z Black Rider says, why am I here? Z Black, you're here because... You want to listen to a reasonable non-fanboy conversation. I think. 
that's the case at least. And eight says Halo hasn't done that in a long time. <laughs> well, again, I mean, I think it's funny when I see people say, "Oh, well, you know, uh, the Halo Bungie fans will never give the three four three Halo a chance." And I don't think it's so much a chance; it's that the bar was so high for Halo, and for good reason. Bungie had set that bar so high that I think any studio coming in trying to adhere to that that standard to that bar um is was was in it was in it was in an uphill battle it's not easy to do it's why I, I look i give mad props to turn 10 you know a lot of people talk about playground and deservedly so i mean you know forza horizon has been a, an awesome title for the xbox but forza what forza's done what they have done with um, what they have done with, you know, the since the I mean, Forza goes back to the OG Xbox days. So, you know, you're th you're looking at over the last fifteen years or so. You know, Forza's just been, I you know, in terms of racing sims, I mean, just top of the class. I mean, and that's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. And so Xbox Live, the Ethernet port, the broadband Ethernet port in the back of the Xbox, the OG Xbox, the ability to, to rip your own CD tracks on your Xbox hard drive and use customized music while you're playing games, the ability to, to live chat, I have a friends list on Xbox Live. If it wasn't for Halo, none of those things, those things would have been irrelevant on the original Xbox. So, you know, I just living through the, and the Xbox, the original Xbox at the time was the most powerful console. It was, I mean, it would, had an internal hard drive, um, you know, allowed you to do things that the other platforms, you know, couldn't do. But it was still outsold by the PlayStation 2. And in part, you know, some of the success that the PlayStation 2 had was the fact that it was um, a cheap DVD player, um, which is why Sony started looking at that metric of player engagement. And then... And then they just Sony just had a you know just a, a an abundance of games. Grand Theft Auto Three was an exclusive for a long time. Onimusha, Devil May Cry, and they had third party stuff on there was locked into PlayStation Two, plus their own first party content. So Hazard Man says power drove PlayStation 4 sales in the beginning. 1080p versus 720p, more expensive Xbox One. Xbox had new IPs than PlayStation 4 at launch. I hear that argument a lot, Hazard Man. And I'm not denying that um, Xbox had more games at launch. But that doesn't tell the whole story. You can have more games at launch. But it isn't, so, it isn't as much the quantity as it is the quality of games that are being launched. And, and the reason why, and it's funny, we go back to 2013. I hear this, conver I hear this, this argument a lot of, well, the PlayStation 4 only sold on, only sold on power. Now let's think about what was happening in 2013. Let's take the entire picture here, where we were in terms of technology, in terms of resolution, 1080p had, 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 had become the standard at this point. There were even games that ran on the 360 that were 1080p resolution. The issue that the Xbox One had. What's up, Gaming Forte? He says, Brad trying to pass Xbox fans off. I don't know what that means. Um. So... You know, they, they had quality, but it, it, it wasn't, 
the the issue that the Xbox One had at launch was that it 1080p was the standard. So as gamers, and I remember you know seeing some of this stuff. Now ultimately, I got an Xbox One anyway at launch because I was already tied into the ecosystem. But I was a little disappointed to see that. It, it that games weren't running 1080p because here I am I got this 1080p television and the Xbox is five is a hundred dollars more than the competition and it's running resolutions that were considered last generation resolutions that was the issue and if you look back at like NPD uh, the Xbox actually still was 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 still pretty competitive. Um, in the United States uh, with the PlayStation 4 at the time. They were they were winning NPDs. I mean, if you guys don't remember that, if you want to use NPD as a metric, uh, you know, they were winning NPDs over PlayStation 4. When you start seeing the disparity in terms of NPDs is when you start seeing Sony cranking out their first-party content. And so I tweeted something out the other day, and I think for whatever reason it got people... And it's tizzy a little bit. Oh, you know, of course the games are coming. What do you think? What's wrong with you, Enrique? They got 15 studios. Of course games are coming. They got Obsidian. Are you telling me Obsidian's not good? What's wrong with you? Yeah, Microsoft, by their own admission through acquiring 15 studios, has admitted that there's a problem. Phil Spencer's talked about this. Um, content for Microsoft this coming generation is going to be really at a premium for them as they need to support Game Pass. Hence the studio acquisitions. And look, I, I love that they picked up Obsidian. Obsidian is one of my favorite developers. Um, I know most gamers, and I well, my assumption, in my opinion, I don't think a lot of Xbox gamers are going to uh, really appreciate the acquisition of Double Fine. Because I think Tim Schafer is one of the most talented developers in the gaming industry. Uh, Ray Theeper says, uh, my point of view of 2013 consoles, the games they showed on Xbox, King of Rise and Dead Rising and PlayStation. As a fan, I know they will give me great games no matter what. Okay. Man, Hazardman said I paid over hundred five hundred thirty dollars for an Xbox One <laughs> with the Connect. I hear, you, dude, I was there with you, man. I think I, with all the games, and everything it was close to be about seven hundred dollars for me at launch. Oh, I see what you're saying, Forte. No, I'm not trying to piss Xbox fans off. I don't do that, man. Don't intentionally try to do it, at least. Yes, Ricardo, it was a hundred dollars more because of Connect. I understand that, but. That even I think that even further compounded the issue that people had with it. But I don't want to spend too much time in 2013 because that's that's long gone. Microsoft's in a much better position than they are than they were in 2013. At least the Xbox platform is in a better position. All right, so um, look, I, Double Fine, great acquisition. Ninja Theory, great acquisition. Um, you know they have Playground. We know what Playground has done with Forza Horizon. Um, you know we don't know what the initiative is going to crank out. Um, we, we've seen Ninja Theory, um, you know, do some really, put out some really great things with, you know, double A games. Um, you know, Project Mario looks very interesting. I think from a creative standpoint, I would say that Ninja Theory is probably Microsoft or Xbox Studios most creative, um, studio. I'd even put them in terms of, I just, in my, in my opinion, I, I would put them above, um, 343. Um, I still, I think that the coalition and Ninja Theory, um, are there in turn 10 are their top three studios um you know you guys may rank them different and that's fine it's okay to have difference of opinions but i see people saying you know microsoft's going to take over market share next generation and, and a lot of that i think is coming from the point of power look guys and i said this and it got people a little bit upset and it wasn't a knock against Xbox. It's just, look, guys, I, I primarily game in the Xbox platform. Hold on just a second, guys. Forte, can you hear me? I can't hear you, Forte. Can you hear me, sir? Oh, I can hear you now. Are you are you are you broadcasting from your No, store? no, hold hold on. I want I want to start off my chest. Now, in my body right now, I'm only standing here to say this. 
You're not botting. Go ahead, man. Okay, good. So you just said that reason. You just said you literally just said that Xbox One they were like winning these at the beginning of the generation. Um, a hundred dollars more, they were actually winning those things. But then Sony started bringing out games that made people change their mind and switch over to PlayStation. Right? Is that what you say? I just want to make sure I read that right. Well, I don't think people were switching over. I think people were uh, ad- adopting the PlayStation Four more than they were the Xbox at the time. Okay, so I'm, but but you're saying it's because the games they were releasing, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at like with some of the releases and stuff of Microsoft of, of Sony's first party bangers, you start seeing okay. that. You start seeing that. Okay, so I will agree with you on that. We got into like the third and fourth year of Xbox and PlayStation going against each other. But at the beginning of the generation, the reason this all went, look, man, people don't want to, don't, exclusives matter. They do matter. They are a reason for you to buy a system. But the reason Xbox really drastically got behind is because they got, they stopped being aggressive with the games that literally people satisfied the system with, like shooters. Call of Duty, once they lost that Call of Duty marketing right and it went to PlayStation, Nobody had a reason to buy an Xbox. All their friends, like all those people that were like huge Call of Duty people, went over to PlayStation. And guess what? Once you get late into like to the middle of the generation, all those friends that wanted to like upgrade their system, because we were still talking about a lot of people that didn't upgrade. Yet at the time. Yeah. Well, absolutely. if your friends, if your friends are on PlayStation now because you switched mm-hmm. over to PlayStation because of this, then that's going to start the. That's going to start the, you know, the whole snowball going down the hill effect. It is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until um, there's nothing you can do about it at that. That was the number one reason why Xbox completely got annihilated early in the generation. And then then Sony started bringing out their first party game. And that just basically solidified the rest of the generation. So exclusives do matter. But Microsoft literally stopped doing the one thing they did all last generation, and that's make sure they had marketing rights to all the biggest games that was out there. They they had a re- they people had a reason to buy the system outside of just the exclusives alone because they knew they were going to get either early content on certain games that they enjoy playing the most. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft dropped the ball on. Them. And that's where they that's where they lost it at the beginning of the generation. I think the reason people think Microsoft can make a turn for the next generation because they think Microsoft's going to do that exact same thing. The only problem is how many people are going to be willing their digital libraries on PlayStation to come back over because we're talking about the casual point. How many of those people are going to get back? I think they can make a dent in it. I don't think they're going to be able to make a a huge dent in it, but that is what people really think is going to happen because once mm-hmm. Sony starts bringing out their first-party game, it's mm-hmm. a wrap. You yeah. know, unless so, unless Microsoft has games of their own, to make that up. But it ultimately just comes down to what are the casual base, are the casual people playing? Call of Duty, Madden, NBA, um, Battlefield, Star Wars. They're playing all those annual release games. And if Microsoft isn't giving people a reason to play on their system to play those games, then all their friends are going to find. Re- stay on the system they're already on so they need to really dig deep with those third-party publishing rights like that's why we <coughs> say so many things about um say so many things about um uh, cyberpunk having if that does jump in game, that gives people a legitimate reason to buy an xbox because they don't have to pay full price for cyberpunk and they can literally play it day and day right on that system for a cheaper price you know that is a legitimate reason and if they can start pulling stuff like that when it comes to their marketing deals, that is bring more people to the system more than the the first party game. First party games are just going to be icy. But that's what I wanted to say. I'm not saying you're wrong or anything, but I agree with you 100. But I think they lost the beginning of the generation just because they mm-hmm. stopped being aggressive around market. And then mm-hmm. that's Forte. You, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, okay, I thought you. Okay, I thought you were still talking. No, no, the, yeah, no. the government just tried to get me. The go- <laughs> you funny man. Um, no, man, I, I, that's a great point. I mean, I, obviously, I think the Call of Duty thing had an impact. Um, I, but I would also say Destiny. I mean, losing Bungie and having, you know, Bungie sign it. Uh, you know, that deal with Sony was was big too. You know, um, but uh, 
but for me, I think kind of kind of the point I was trying to make though um, with the Xbox Studios, um, and you, I think you would agree with this, Forte. Like they they're great studios, right? I think we lost Forte. All right. All right. So I think yeah, we lost we lost Forte. No, I'm back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I think you would agree that a lot of these studio acquisitions they have have, have, have been great. I mean, Obsidian's a, a, a really good studio. Um, I love Ninja Theory. Um, you know, Ninja Theory has a you know good track record of putting out some good games. Um, but my tweet overall this week was, hey, you know, features aside, now Microsoft needs to crank out like these new and, it, and not. And I'm not talking about Gears, Halo, Forza, Fable. I'm saying that. Now's the time for them to, they have this great platform in the Xbox Series X. Let's see them. Now they need to get on the same level um, in terms of quality with Sony and Nintendo. And that's not to say that Xbox first party, that they make terrible games. Gears was a good game. Um, Halo was a good game. But they're not games that I think that we're looking back at Forte at this, you know, this point in the generation, or we reflect on this generation as, oh my God, remember how genre defining that Gears Five was? Uh, you yeah, know? we're not we're not going to have that conversation. We and we haven't, in my opinion, have had that conversation about anything first party related to Xbox since, and even Gears when it came out wasn't first party; it was second party exclusive. We haven't I haven't seen an impact, um, on the level of Gears, um, this console generation. And so my point was, and it wasn't a knock at Xbox, but it was more of a, hey, let's keep things in perspective. Let's wait and see. Let's not get, let's not give Xbox Studios the crowns just yet. We can only, you know, someone said, oh, you, you know, you're not, you, you haven't seen the, the the hires they've been making, and yeah, they've made some very impressive hires, right? I would never dispute that they have talent at the initiative. Of course they do, but we got to see what that talent produces. You know, you can't. You can't, uh, you know, you can't sit there and say that because they have all these talented players, if you will, that that automatically translate translates to just these genre defining these great games. We don't know. We can't make that judgment until those games release. And that was really my point. Uh, and that's not to take away from how good Obsidian is, but I don't think Obsidian is on the same level as a Naughty Dog. Um, I don't think Obsidian is on the same level as a Monolith Soft. Or Nintendo EPD, um, I don't. You know, you know. You look at, you know, you know. You look at. I know they're a third party developer. You look at Rockstar. They're not on the same level as Rockstar. It doesn't mean that they're a a a bad studio. They're just not on the upper echelon. Um, and again, that's not a knock against them. It just is what it is. It's like sports. Forte. How many teams for the last ten years have been on the same level as the the Patriots? Uh, not too many, right? Not too many. Does it mean that they've the been other, beat though before? Yeah, but does it mean the other teams, you know, in the, in, in 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 you know the other teams in the playoffs are, are bad teams? No. no, they just they're just not fundamentally sound like that one team has been for twenty years. Yeah, they're just not as good as them, right? <laughs> I mean, right. That's, I mean, that's that's it is what it is. It's not a it's not a knock. It's not a knock. No, you're right. You know, and so that I, was. That's kind of that was my point. I think that people kind of took it as, oh, well, you're saying that Obsidian doesn't matter or Ninja Theory doesn't matter, and they're not good studios. Of course, they're good studios, and you know they do. I'm not saying they don't. They certainly have the opportunity to become, you know, uh, a Naughty Dog. You know, Naughty Dog wasn't always the same caliber of developer, you know, 30 years ago when they first started as they are today. That took time. Yeah, I, I this is what I, I think that it means. I think for you, you're pretty much talking in line with, you know, Sony cultivated and curated all these studios and these titles over the course of years. Twenty five years. Every, yeah, and people want and people are saying, well, Xbox can do that overnight. I, I think that's a little hyperbole because I don't it takes more. It takes more than one game to actually, you know, make a studio. But I will tell you, people, people are excited, and I get them. Because Excited for what next generation brings, and you know, seeing Microsoft being more aggressive next generation, 
a lot to a lot of people. So I'm not willing to, you know, on anybody's sunshine when it comes to that. I just always tell people, just keep it in perspective because overall, Microsoft does have an uphill um, hill decline and they're doing all the right things now, but don't expect like, you know, monumental video game making from the developers that they have as of right now because it's going to take time you know hellblade was a success we know ninja theory is a really really good and they're a very very talented uh studio but what they're going to do with the next one now if the next one comes out and just as good and they have on the one that they have made before then we can start moving them up that chain of really good developer stuff i think people already just want to stamp the approval of them on you know, of all these studios right now without even seeing what they're going to come out with next like people are already saying the initiative is going to be a world-class studio just because you've got world-class talent doesn't mean you're going to have a world-class game because i've seen some pretty talented developers come out with some duds before you know <laughs> i mean think about it asamiak didn't make a game called fuse and um yeah that and, wasn't um, that wasn't their best was it it wasn't too good yeah but then they turned it around and made a game like spider-man and i mean it was it was something that propelled the studio to, and I don't even think a zombie is as good as people think they are. I mean, they're a really good developer. They just, they fit Sony well. That's why I felt like Sony made the decision to buy them because they already had such a great relationship with that studio with all the games they made for. But you wouldn't say that they're like a, a A tier or S tier studio. They're probably like an A tier or B tier studio that just, you know, overachieved on a couple of different games and they just happened to get one of the biggest franchises to uh, license franchises to make a game about and they knocked it out the park. So, you know, it is what it is on that. But then you also have the complete opposite spectrum of that. You got a game, like you said, third party, Bungie, makes a game called Destiny that technically could have been exclusive to Xbox if they would have let them make the game that they wanted to make, but then you got the polar opposite of called three, a, a studio called 343 that can't put a Halo game and make it 100% great on both sides of the spectrum. Oh, so, Forte. They just need look, to kill Master Chief. Look, they no, they can't kill Master Chief, man. If they did that, they, they, I, dude, they had a chance to do it if they would have did the, the if they would have did Lock right. If they would have did a, Agent Lock right and made him a, a likable character and not mess up the whole way that they introduced them, people probably would be okay with letting him take the mantle going forward. But now people are like, no, nah, man, we don't want him. We want somebody else. We want Chief. Yeah, I so, like I like Luke Cage. Uh, yeah, yeah, we like Luke Cage. We didn't like Locke. <laughs> hey, I gotta, so, I, hey, Forte, yeah. if, I got I to gotta pay the bills here. Victor Alstein with a $5 super, super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, I disagree. Naughty Dog takes like five plus years to make those bangers. Most devs don't get that time or money. CD Projekt Red shows how in a little time um no um uh, actually i don't think anybody said anything bad about naughty dog naughty dog is naughty god well he's saying that he's saying that naughty dog takes five plus years to make those bangers most devs don't get that time or money that's uh, because sony gives it to them that's because sony gives it to them that's not that's look that's that's a that's a you problem for the developer if you're not yeah. getting funding or if you're not giving time by your publisher um look it's un it, look it is what it is i mean um look they're releasing two great generation you're gonna last of us very in parts and they release uncharted 4 in the middle of the generation you know yeah. as much as you some people probably didn't like last of, i mean um, uncharted 4 because they thought it was too ho-hum but it was still a great freaking game and they released it and it does it didn't hurt or anything their the, their standings with people of how they feel about the games because last of us is going to be the game that is unfortunately last of us is going to be the game that they remember because that game kind of resonates with more people than even Uncharted does. Because Uncharted, it's kind of already been done before when it comes to the way the Tomb Raider games are. And some people arguably say the Tomb Raider games are kind of better than play better. But yeah, Last yeah. of Us is a game that is its own thing that hasn't been done before. And just the, just the way that it makes you emotionally feel, you connect with that game more than anything. And that's why people are looking at that game as possibly being the swan song for the PS4, just like it was for the PS3 at that time. So Naughty Dog is in a league of their own when it comes to developers that are under first party, you know, influence. Um, and then you got those third party ones like, you know, CG Product Red is up there just because they make really great games and they take the time. Yeah. And then I honestly believe Rockstar just cannot, you can't even 
you can't even sniff what Rockstar does with their games because they made one game in literally a whole generation that literally might might surpass every game that's ever been sold ever in life. Yeah. Hey, with Grand Theft Auto Five. Real quick, I want to go uh, back to what Victor Alstein said about um, CD Projekt Red shows how little uh, sh- shows how in a little time. I think he's referring to development time. Um, uh, you know, Cyberpunk twenty seven seventy seven has been in development for more than five plus years. It's been in development a long time. Um, you know, um, NV Dub says um, uh, Nintendo took five plus years to make Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, yeah, and so there. I mean, there is something to be said about that. Like you know. Those games, those games take time to make too. Um, you know, and one one thing that I, I found interesting, uh, Mike Mike Ibarra, who said, um, you know, on Twitter uh, a couple months ago, he said that you know, because people were talking about, um, you know, I think we've talked about this forte, how like this was the generation to win. Um, you know, he even said, he said, look, it's 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 really hard to get people at this point to switch platforms um, unless you have these compelling big budget triple a games um that really wow people he's like you're not just going to do it on double a games alone um and that's and i thought that was a really uh insightful and great point um uh, again i'm not suggesting that microsoft's only going to be releasing double a games because i know somebody's going to say that oh you're just saying no that's not what i'm saying um but you know you know to your point forte um and, and look, I, I, I think you never know. I mean, like, I, I hear what you're saying with, like, you know, these things take time. You know, Sony's been doing this for 25 years. Nintendo's been doing this for 30 years, 30 plus years. Um, you know, Microsoft, I think, is really for the first time really focusing on in the, in that internal first party again, uh, which I don't think they've really done, uh, you know, the past, you know, 13 years or so. Um, they haven't done that their whole entire <laughs> existence of being a platform holder, sir. Let's. Yeah, every, yeah, every yeah. Game, every game that they have has been purchased as it was already done. Gears of War was already done. I think the only thing they probably built was Forza and 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 um and Fable, but Fable is nowhere to be seen. And Forza is the only thing that I know of note that they actually cultivated from the ground up in their own studio. Everything else has been purchased. You know, Halo's been purchased. Gears has been purchased. So this is truly the first time you can really see Microsoft doubling down on what they need to do on a first party perspective. So that's why I think a lot of people are like optimistic about it, but we don't know what's going to come from until the games start coming out. Yeah. Um, hold on a sec here, man. Give me a sec. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on a sec here. Uh, J Love, um, dude, like, don't, you don't need to refer to someone as an ex. I'm not going to even, you know, uh, repeat what you said, but uh, yeah, let's leave those kind of comments out of the conversation. We don't do that here, dude. Hold on a sec. Sorry about that, Forte. I had to moderate something real quick, man. Um, Salty's Gaming says, so Xbox gamers will get their bangers in 2023 or 2024. I mean, Salty, that's, I mean, you know, they, there's there's things that uh, developers are working on behind the scenes that we don't know about. So I, I, I see when, I think Ricardo said, I don't want to wait five to seven years. Um, there is content uh, that they haven't even discussed uh, that's already, you know, past that year one, if you will, in, in terms of development. So uh, I think you'll you'll see, you know, you know, games coming out before 2023, 2024, um, because they've they've been in development uh, for some time. We just we're just not aware of them. So Forte, yeah, I think we lost them. All right. So anyhow, so that's that's my. No, I'm here. Oh, okay. That's my. Um, Ryan Linus says, at least Microsoft stopped that quadruple A games. <laughs> uh, Victor Alstein with the $2 super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, point is money and time go a long way for a lot of devs. That's very true. Cool. Well, like I said, that's that's the, the biggest coming back because I, I took like a 50 break 
say this, so I need to go back to work. But um, <laughs> all right, Forte, man. But you had- no, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Xbox does to show before people completely crown, and I think that's going to be the that's going to be the conversation going throughout next generation till they actually prove it. But hey, man, people are excited because Xbox is something they haven't done in a while, and you know, I think. I think that is something that could be celebrated in itself. So let these people have their fun, but just wary of the games that are coming out, guys. Don't crown anybody until the games actually start releasing. That's the biggest. Yeah, and I agree with that, dude. I mean, look, I'm excited. Look, I'm not buying a Series X, but I'm excited. I think it's a, a, a very impressive piece of hardware, you know? Right. Um, I mean, dude, Forte, you and I already know higher frame rates is a game changer, man. Yes, it is. I mean, I, dude, Gears Five, Destiny on PC, different game, different game. Yeah, different game. You know, Sekiro on PC, different game, man. All right, well, you enjoy the rest of the show. I'll be listening in chat. All right, Forte, I appreciate, it, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. Hey, we got to get your your um, what's his face back on. What's his name, Justin? Oh, Jeremy. Yeah, I'll, Jeremy, I'll yeah. talk to him. Um, you want to try to get him back on? Yeah, let's yeah. try to get him. Um, let's see. I think next week we have we have Boom coming on on Wednesday next week. Um, maybe the week after. Yeah, I'll I'll talk because I'll probably he'll probably make the visit to my store. So, but I'll talk to. Him. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Forte. No problem, bro. See you later. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, guys. That was uh, Gaming Forte. He was kind enough to uh, hop in the, the Brap rant real quick, talk some video games with us. Um, but look, man, I, and look, guys, I'm not saying you, you should not be excited for this piece of hardware. I think uh, there's a techie in all of us as gamers. And uh, yeah, absolutely. It's natural to be excited uh, about this. I think my only thing is just perspective. Um, because look, I've seen, I've seen the most powerful um, consoles come and go, um, and the thing that ultimately did them in was was content. And I'm not saying Xbox doesn't have any games. Obviously, it does. Um, I'm really actually, you know, I'm really excited to see. Um, one of the things I'm really excited to see with Xbox is obviously Japanese games has kind of been. You know, uh, uh, Japanese support has it's, it's been somewhat of a challenge for Microsoft. Uh, we just recently got uh, Yakuza um, on the X through actually on Xbox through Xbox Game Pass, which I I, I picked up uh, Yakuza Zero uh, when it came out on PlayStation Four. Um, I got the special edition, which is actually really cool. Came with, like business cards and shit and whatever. But um, I'm playing it now on PC, and I'm telling you, like uh, one looks great on PC, 60 plus frames, ultra settings. Thank you. Um, as I pat my PC on its back. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited to see that kind of game make its way to the Xbox platform. I just hope those kinds of games are supported, uh, by, uh, those in game pass or people that own the Xbox. Um, I'd like to see more, uh, content. Um, like it's actually really cool that tales of, um, uh, Vesperia is actually on, um, X cloud right now. I was actually playing that game on X cloud. Um, and, um, you know, as I mentioned, now we have Yakuza. So I, I really interested to see. Hopefully, we see more uh, of those types of games. I would love to see a Persona uh, title on the Xbox platform. Uh, hopefully, we start seeing those kind of games come to uh, the uh, platform, this co- this new console generation. Um, but look, again, guys, I'm not saying that Xbox doesn't have any games. Clearly, it does. The only thing, and, and the reason why I talk about quality and and uh, quality AAA content because those AAA games, guys, whether, whether you want to believe it or not, are the showpieces of hardware. I mean, if you look at what Naughty Dog did with, or what's what they're going to do with the uh, the Last of Us Two. If you look at a game like God of War, if you look at what Guerrilla did with Horizon Zero Dawn, I mean, those games, the 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 one the one advantage consoles have over PCs is the optimization piece. You look at what those developers did with that hardware. Wow, wow. Like I'm like I. That's why like when I think about PlayStation Five, I get really excited because I'm like, holy shit! Like look at what they did with lesser hardware. Imagine what they're gonna do with the PlayStation Five. Put the PS Five in the hands of Naughty Dog, and what what are they gonna do? 
And, and that's the piece that really excites me too. Um, and so again, I'm not saying that, you know, Obsidian's not a good, you know, studio. I've had people tell me, oh, are you, are you trying to say that? I'm not saying that at all. And I'm not saying that the studios that Microsoft has acquired can't get to that level of output where they're in that high tier in terms of, you know, AAA, um, you know, content, you know, the games that really highlight the technology that's in or the tech that's in this particular console. That's all I'm saying. And if they do that, and if they can do that, guys, we all benefit from that. It's okay. I always say it's okay. It's always okay to be critical of the thing you love. It's always okay to want better, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying that because um, I've had people say, you, oh, you're just being a Debbie Downer on the next X. No, I'm not. I'm excited about the possibilities. But that's all they are right now is possibilities. I want to see the final product. And I can't wait to see that final product. But I also know that I can't make that judgment. I can't make any kind of final judgment until I see that product released. And that's all I'm saying, folks. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't be excited. I'm not saying that Obsidian's a bad studio. But I'm also not putting the crown on their head just yet. <laughs> and that's just managing expectations. Ryan Landis says, I agree with you, but it I'd say that uh, what they've shown on this Series X so far looks good. Uh, Victor also says, uh, people say, people talk about the X not being uh, utilized, but the same can be said for the Pro. I mean, you know, I think obviously first party, uh, I think what people are saying, utilize, I will say this, I think because of Sony's first party output, they've utilized our hardware more in terms of highlighting some of those bigger AAA games, Victor, um, where, you know, I think the big showpiece for the Series X is really Gears 5, but you have multiple examples of, other games that showpiece PlayStation 4 Pro outside of just one game. Uh, so I think that's that's probably what people refer to, uh, in my opinion, when they say that uh, the Series X really hasn't been showcased as much. I think they're just making that comparison. Now, again, that doesn't mean the Series X is, or the, uh, I'm sorry, I keep calling it the Series X. That doesn't mean that the Xbox One X is a bad console. I just think that Microsoft hasn't released enough games um, to really, you know, show... Um, you know, the capabilities of that that particular platform or hardware. Uh, Deidre says, Ad Enrique, or he says, uh, you're a realist. Some people can't comprehend that. I mean, look, I mean, I look, I just, I, I don't understand the console war stuff. I never will. I've been gaming. Uh, actually, I can because I used to console war. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, recovering console war addict. Uh, I've been um, clean uh, for 10 plus years. I haven't used console wars in a long time. Um, so I understand that mentality where I'm telling you guys, because I've been there and I've had friends that have been there. I could tell you that I know for a fact that when you console war and you stand for a company that hard, you are probably playing games that you know deep down inside your in your core that you're not liking, but you're going to prop it up all in the name of a console war and trying to win whatever winning means. <laughs> but look, I, I try to outside of, you know, uh, what, um, that's what a D truth said. Look, I just try to put things in perspective. That's all. And, you know, when I see people say things like, um, like I've seen people say ridiculous things about Microsoft, how, oh, <coughs> how they're, <coughs> excuse me, how their first party, acquisitions aren't going to help them well you can't say that because we don't know that for sure um we can at very least based on a sample size of games that their uh, acquisitions have released can say uh probably with good confidence that they're going to release good games you know if you look at obsidian and ninja theory uh in turn 10 uh in 343 and the coalition i think we could all say that uh but there is a difference between good and great um and you know, the people who say that Sony's scared um, because they haven't talked about the PlayStation 5. Look, guys, it's, you, you step back and you rationally think about it. You look at it. Um, it's an oversimplification of what goes on behind the scenes. 
Um, and and that's that, that tends to be the argument from console warriors in general. They oversimplify things. They think 2 plus 2 equals 4. Uh, and you're probably thinking, well, what are you talking about, Enrique? Of course 2 plus 2 equals 4. Yes, it, I get that. What I'm saying is that um, what makes common sense does always make business sense. That There's a lot of things that we're not privy to behind the scenes. I can tell you um, from uh, people um, who are, are close to you know things going on internally at Sony, um, they're not they're not really concerned about the Series X, and you might be saying, "Well, how is that possible?" They're not. They're more concerned about how to market the PlayStation Five and get that console into at launch into the into the hands of their core fan base, their core consumer base, because that's that is going to be vital for them for the success of that console. That's what they're thinking about. They're not worried about Microsoft revealed as great as that reveal was that Microsoft did, and I love they did that. Um, Sony's not really looking over the shoulder per se. Um, and you know, it's interesting. Um, and I'll, I'll touch upon this, this part too, that, um, uh, I'll say this part, you know, Sony's been doing this for 25 years and I've had people tell me, well, just as much as you question, um, whether or not uh, you know Microsoft's first party is going to put out new, big quality AAA bangers, games that are in the conversation for you know game of the year, games that are in conversation for a game of the generation, things like that. Uh, you know you can't make this you know you can't make that same guarantee about Sony first party. Um, and I've had this conversation uh, quite a bit. Uh, to that point, I will say, I understand that. I mean, it's not out of the realm of the universe to say that Naughty Dog uh, could never lay an egg. Of course they can. Humans are fallible by nature. No one's perfect. But they're pretty damn close to perfect. And Sony and Nintendo have had a consistent track record where you could step back as a gamer, look at look at the look at their output and reasonably think to yourself, you know what? Based on their track record, I can see them releasing new, exciting, big, AAA quality content, content that highlights the strengths of the particular platform that these games are made for. We can say that with confidence because of the track record, the history that we've seen over 25 years. Yes, I have confidence in that. You know, I, I apply that that rationale to the stock market when you're buying stocks and you look at how stocks performed you know, over the last couple of years, it's usually a good indicator. <laughs> so, you know, it's so I, I just bring that up just just to bring a different point of view. That's all. Um, Victor says, did you ever play Advent Rising? Would love to see it in T Human rebooted for next gen. Um, I would love to play. I would love to see T Human. I did not play Advent Rising. I actually put out a, a tweet um, yesterday, you know, talking about um, asking the question of what games would you like to see come back? Um, Oni Musha was on there. For, Oni Musha was on the list for me. Uh, uh, Sukuden, uh, Sukuden was on the list. Um, Otoji. Uh, I can't remember what other games I put on there. Um, but again, I mean, look, guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this brap rant. But uh, again, look. My overall point, and, and this is just to get to kind of clarify any confusion here. I'm not. I, the ultimately the series x is going to be judged by the quality content that is on that platform for microsoft's first party that's it and and it's okay to say that it's okay to say you know what i'm going to wait and make that final judgment and see what whatever despite whatever talent they have now whatever you know developers they brought on board from other talented studios it's okay to say you know what I'm going to wait to see what the final output is and then make that final judgment when they release their, you know, their content. And again, I say this, put it in perspective, content is king um, because, you know, I've lived that where I put so much emphasis on hardware and not content and have come out disappointed. We're like, wow, I didn't really like this game. <laughs> so content is king. And again, I'm not saying that Microsoft can't get there. And I'm telling you, if they get there, we all win as gamers. And it, that makes Game Pass even a tremendous 
even makes it more of a value to gamers if Microsoft starts releasing those big genre defining exclusives and you get to play them on Game Pass like me who's locked in for two years and you've paid a dollar to do that. But even at 15 a clip, whatever the case is, imagine that. Imagine getting a genre defining experience on a service. I mean, that is that's a that's a huge win. Huge win. We should all want that. Xbox, uh, Xbox Four says, bro, Xbox has already teased Everwild, Hellblade 2, Project Morrow, Halo Infinite. They showed way more so far. Uh, yeah, they showed us Xbox, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but we don't know the quality of those games. That's my point. And, and this is and this is this is this is my only you know point. Like it's great they've shown those games. Um, Hellblade 2, we we look we we can we know Hellblade 2 is probably going to be good based on the first Hellblade. We don't know about Project Morrow. Uh, Halo Infinite, eh, you know, I'm still on three four three. Everwild, I don't know about that. Could be, could be a good game, but showing and delivering are two different things, and the two always get conflated. And it's not to say that those games are are going to be bad. Sure, they've shown games, but let's not conflate showing and delivering because they're two different things. And on that point, I am out, guys. I want to thank everyone in the live chat for coming by and hanging out with me. Definitely appreciate it. Give a big shout out to Gaming Forte, who uh, stopped by to hang out with us today for a little bit. Uh, Hazard Man, said, oh, Hazard Man, don't, don't forget the honey shrunk the kid. <laughs> Yeah, Z Black. I I loved Outer Worlds. It was a good game, um, but I'd love to see them uh, maybe incorporate. Um, I don't know. Um, you know what? I'm gonna say that for another rant because that's gonna be a whole another rabbit hole that I'll go down. <laughs> Thank you, Envy Dubs. Says good stream as always. But no, seriously, guys. Um, I want to thank everyone again for hanging out with me this morning. And um, hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit that bell notification so you know when we go live. And everyone, hey, if you haven't done so, if you're interested in, in Yakuza 0, download Yakuza 0 if you have Game Pass. I mean, I think it's, it. look, at least give it a try. I like it. Um, it's it's a very, uh, it, it takes place in 1990, uh, 1988 Japan when uh, the Japanese economy was booming at the time. Um, and, um, it's got some, uh, great, uh, entertaining fighting mechanics. It's got a good storyline. Um, I love that the voice acting is in Japanese. Um, and look, I just, it's, it's one of my favorite series. And so I would highly recommend it. At least give it a try. Um, Victor Alstein says you need to be angry when ranting. <laughs> no, uh, maybe sometimes, uh, maybe one day if something really gets me, uh, uh, amped up, I'll, I'll do an angry rant, but, uh. I typically just, I don't know, I, I typically don't do that, but. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, all right, guys, uh, enjoy your gaming weekend. Um, and please, check out Yakuza 0. I'm telling you guys, it's an awesome game. It's on Game Pass right now. Hazardman says, Outer Worlds 2 needs to be bigger. I would agree with that. That's actually what I was going to talk about. Uh, but that's another um, that's another conversation. Envy Dub says, "Do it, Xbox gamers. Y'all need to experience that Yakuza greatness." Yeah, and you know what, Envy? I'd love to see Judgment come to the Xbox. I think I think a lot of people on the Xbox platform, in my opinion, would probably uh, enjoy that game. Um, oh, Z Black Riders playing Frostpunk. That's actually I heard a pretty good game. Buck Rogers says the whole Yakuza series is great. Ryan Landis, no stadium news, no. Z Black Rider says, I'm the Adderall Mooch. <laughs> On that note, guys, I am out. We'll catch you next time. Have a great weekend. Speaking of Mooch, make sure to catch Crossfire tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep an eye out for the Iron Lords podcast here at PAX East. Keep an eye out for content that they'll be dropping related to PAX East. So that note, guys, I am out. We'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>